Hello to Physics 277 students and hello to anyone else who may have stumbled across this video on YouTube. This video is going to be a quick introduction to editing files in the terminal or command line of Linux using the GNU Emacs editor. Now, for best results, you should probably watch this video from uh, using full screen uh, so you get the highest resolution on it because I'm a little worried you may not be able to see the text that I type if you don't. Now Emacs is an editor that we can use to edit text files on any system on which it can be installed. And Emacs is available on a wide variety of systems, not only Linux, but any type of Unix or BSD system. It's available for Windows, it's available for OS X, and it's a very popular editor. Now, what we're going to do is use Emacs to, on this demonstration, just edit a plain text file. So I'm logged into a Linux system. In this particular case, for my Stony Brook students, I'm logged into the portal for a math lab. And I'm in a directory, if I type in ls command here, where I don't have any files at present. And I'm going to use Emacs to create a new text file. And I'm going to enter some text into it. And the way that I do that is I use the Emacs command. I say Emacs, and then give it the name of a file that I would like to create. And I'm just going to make one up. I'm going to say file1.txt. When I do this, a window pops open within the terminal window that I have here that is showing me an empty file, essentially. And I'm free to now just type text into it. I can start typing text. So let me just enter some random text. This is a first line of text. Here is, oops, is another line of text. And this is a third line. And here is a fourth line of text. Okay. So I've just typed in text and entered it here. And that's all you need to do to enter text in Emacs. There's no sort of mode that we need to have here in order to basically, that we have to go into in order to enter text into the file. Now, there's some interesting things happening here that I want to point out. Um, first of all, let's suppose we want to move around this text and change some of it. How would we do that? Well, there are two ways we can navigate easily through a file with Emacs. One of them is we can use the arrow keys down to the right of the enter key on most keyboards. So you can use up arrow to move up, down arrow to move down, and you could use the right arrow to move to the right, and of course the left arrow to move to the left. So that's fairly simple. However, there's another way that you can do this, and that's just like moving back and forth through commands in the bash shell. We can also use the same command sequences that we would use in order to move back and forth to the bash shell. Remember, we learned this about the bash shell in the videos that I have up here, and I'll put a link to those up at the end of this video. We could use control P to move to the previous line or control N to move to the next line. So when I do that, I'm holding down the control key and I'm hitting the P key here as well. So I have to have both depressed at the same time, the control key and the P. And of course, to move to the next line, it's control N and N. Okay, so if I want to move to the uh, right on the line, I can say control F and that moves me a character at a time to the right or control B for back. Control B, Control B, Control B, Control B, Control B, Control B. All right, so this should be the first thing that you try when you enter a file and enter some text in Emacs. Now, I've done this. Let's actually modify some text. Suppose I want to get rid of the word this in the fourth line right here. How would I do that? Well, there are two ways that I could do that. One is I could put my cursor at the end of the word this, and I could use the backspace backspace key and I would delete backwards. Let me re-enter this again. Another way we could do it is to basically move back to the beginning of a line and use the delete key. And that deletes going forwards. 
So I have two ways that I can delete text. Either one of them is just fine, whatever happens to be most convenient for you. Now, another thing that we want to do now that we've created a text file is to save it. How would we do that? The mouse will not work here. We're in a mode now. I can move my cursor around here and click on various things, but it isn't going to do any good. These things look like their menus up the top, but I can click till um, the cows come home and nothing will happen. Everything that's going to happen when I use Emacs in this terminal mode that we're doing here now is going to have to happen by keyboard sequences, sequences of characters. And the one that will save a file is the mo one of the most important ones. It's one of the two most important ones. And that is Control X followed by Control S. To do that, I'm going to type Control, hit the Control key, hold it down, and type X. And then I'm going to hit the Control key and hold it down and hit S. And when I did that, you'll notice down here at the bottom, it actually told me what it did. It said it wrote out slash home slash campus dot stonybrook.edu slash dswesty slash my sb file slash code slash file one dot txt. It told me what it did. It told me it saved that file. Okay. Now, if I want to exit once I'm done saving it, and one thing I should caution you to do when you are adding material to a file using an editor, right, you should always save frequently. Don't save, don't type in hundreds of lines and forget to save. Get in the habit of every few lines that you enter, save it, all right? Because if for some reason that editor crashes because the system goes down or whatever, your edits may not be saved. So it's a good habit just to get into to frequently save. To exit, now that I'm done here, I'll type Control X followed by Control C and I've exited. Now, what do I have? Let's do an ls command. You can see now there's a file named file1.txt there. We can see the contents of that file using one of the programs that we learned about in one of the other videos. And again, I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. The cat command, I'll say file1.txt. And there's the content that I had entered. It's showing you what's contained in that file now or I could have used a more command, it would have done essentially the same thing in this case. Let's add another line of text to that file. How would we do it? We'll just say emacs and give it the name of the file as an argument, uh, 1.txt. Now I'm back in that file. I can add a fifth line here. Here is a fifth, oops, fifth line of text. Okay. And again, if I wanna save it, I type control X, control S. Now, one other thing I want to point out to you while you're working in a file here, Emacs has a number of very useful features. One of them is that it tells you a number of things. This gray bar down here at the bottom of the terminal, you'll notice it says here, for example, file1.txt. It tells you what file it's in. Another very useful piece of information is this L6 here. It tells you what line your cursor is currently located on. Let's move up using control P here to move up, all right? And you can see as I move up, it changes to L1. Now let's move down using control N. Control N and the L2 change to, or L1 change to L2. I'll hit control N again, change to L3. So this is very useful, especially when you're debugging code that you've written and the compiler tells you, oh, you've got an error on line 52, all right? This will tell you what line you are on, all right? By looking at that status bar and looking what this number here basically says. Okay, so that's very useful. So let's save this again. It always never hurts to save frequently. Even if you think you've already saved, you can always save again. Control X, Control S, right? Control X, Control C. Now let's do an LS command again. Look at this, this is very interesting. There are now two files there. There's a file named file1.txt, and there's another file named file1.txt with a tilde at the end of that txt. What is the tilde file? Well, the tilde file is a backup of the original file. When I went into Emacs the second time and I added a fifth line of text to that file, what happened was Emacs kept a backup of the previous version. 
So that way, if you accidentally delete something when you're in Emacs that you didn't want to, maybe not accidentally, maybe you deleted something and then you really decided you didn't want to do that, you still have a copy of the previous version of that file sitting around. Let's take a look at both of them with cat. If I say cat file1.txt tilde, you'll see it has four lines of text. If I say cat of file1.txt, you'll see it has five lines of text, right? This version right here was the previous version before I started editing it, right? When I saved it, the new version, it kept the old version as a backup by taking the file name and writing out a new file with a tilde at the end. So that tilde file is always going to be a backup. Now, if you decide you've you're done with edits and you're okay with the new file, you're happy with it, you can always delete that. So in this case, I'll say rm file one dot txt tilde, and I'll delete it, and then I'll do an ls, and there I don't have that file. After you've edited a lot of files in your directory, you may have a lot of those tilde files sitting around cluttering things up, and you may wish to get rid of them. Okay, so this wraps it up for this video. We'll expound more on Emacs' capabilities here in the next video and look for the links to the videos that I mentioned here in the upper right corner of the window of this video near the end. See you next time.